Hello everybody, Dave Neal here, stand-up comedian and host of Bachelor in Paradise Canada, a guy's review. That's right, this is episode 5 of Bachelor in Paradise Canada, the recap. I told you guys I wasn't going to do this anymore. I quit I quit doing this three days ago. I said, you know what, the juice isn't worth the squeeze. I can't do it. And then enough of you messaged me, where's the recap? And I was like, all right, your boy's back. We're back in town. Let's get into it. All right, here's the deal. I'm going to need this recap to get 50 subscribers or I'm not doing it next week. So I'm giving you guys polite notification. The first three or four episodes, this it went downhill. And I think that's because a lot of people just aren't watching Bachelor in Paradise Canada. It is a very good show. The show itself is very good. Um, I'm going to, again, we'll get into the recapping in just a second. But if you stumbled upon this video and you aren't watching Bachelor in Paradise Canada, I think these recaps are still funny enough. I've got all the tabs lined up. I'm going to go through all the video, all the clips. I don't do that with my normal terrestrial United States version of The Bachelor. I don't go through all the clips anymore because I realized, uh, you know, a lot of people, you either know what I'm talking about or you don't. But in this case, I'm doing a some photojournalism, if you will. So follow along. All right, let's... So, so like, like I said, really, you're going to have to subscribe. Double check and see if you're subscribed. If you already are, send this to one of your friends who watches Bachelor in Paradise Canada. We need to get the numbers up in order for this to make sense. So that's not against you guys. You guys are watching. I uh, appreciate you all so much, but that's just everyone else. Uh, shots fired. Join the club or we're not, or I'll pull this bus right around. All right, let's get into it. Oh boy. We open up with Brandon Quinn Scanzino. Scanzano, excuse me, mess that up. Lone Wolf at the bar. By the way, happy birthday. Turned 27 yesterday, 27 years young. Although he looks like a 70 year old man who's stressed out because his pension, you know, didn't kick in. Look at him. He just looks like a stressed guy who missed his flight at a bar. <laughs> you know, he's at the airport. And he's like, oh boy, I'm not making it home to the kids for Christmas this year. The wife left me. There he is. The Lone Wolf at a bar. Normally, Lone Wolf at a bar is a good place to attack from, you know, in normal society because, you know, you're only one bachelorette party away from coming in and having things work out for you. But in this case, until uh, until a pontoon boat drags in some new, uh, some fresh, uh, I don't know, uh, choice people, uh, you're, you're stuck there kind of having a uh, twisted tea. All right. So we'll get into it. And again, uh, Bear with me as I kind of go through all these photos because it is, I do this all on the fly. So um, every guy's been the lone wolf. Meanwhile, Adam, Adam, <clears throat> I can't do his voice. I don't have good enough. Uh, Adam and Ileana are on a date in a Twisted Tea commercial. Ileana says Adam isn't giving her a lot to work with. Oh, the shiny red ball isn't as shiny or red as you thought, is it? Right? She liked him. He was a new flavor of the month. And then she's like, oh, maybe not. Kind of like Twisted Tea. You try it. You're like, pretty good. You're in your third Twisted Tea. And you're like, I'm going to go back to tequila soda. If I were Ileana, I'd be insecure about how nice and shiny Adam's legs are. Right? Look at those legs. He's got A-Rod's face with J-Lo's legs. That's what he's got going on there. I stand by it. Ileana talks with Brendan after. Let's go to that. She talks with Brendan. Oh, no, there she is again with the shiny. Oh, there's the shiny legs. Boy, what kind of lotion is he using? He's got really nice skin there. All right, I digress. So she uh, kisses him. They schmooch. And then Ileana talks with Brendan. He tells her he is sad, but he can take it. Good move. She says she has to tell Adam her heart is somewhere else. Yeah, the boy. And there's Brendan smirk. That's the smirk we all look for. That's the face. Where's my Harry Potter one? That's the face of a man who kept his cool and let it be as it may. Ladies, take note. He kept his cool because if he went nuts, then she's going to go, well, he went keep his head uh, totally. So you got to keep your cool and hope it all works out. This isn't always the case. Usually the new guy swoops in. But in this case, all I say is uh, give Ileana some banaka and then go to town. Town being Mississauga, Ontario. Go, I don't know. Go, go somewhere. Uh, so he's got that smirk. Meanwhile, um, Adam is acting confident and full of positive energy. Freeze dry that mood, Adam. The other guy's recognizing that Ileana is ditching Adam. The other guys can tell. They're like, oh, this isn't good. Because uh, Ileana's like, Adam, can we talk? And the other guys are like, ooh. Then Brendan shows up with a shit-eating grin. The other guys go wild to see his smirk. Look at the other guys. <laughs> this is what I love about guys. Brendan shows up and he's like, yeah, she's coming back to me. And the other guys are like, ah, oh my gosh, I told you. What are you going to do? They're high-fiving him like they won the Super Bowl. This is what it means to be a guy. I don't mean to just uh, stereotype across gender, but men, hey, here's the deal. Women 
are in more control of relationships because they get to choose, you know, there's always more male suitors, at least for a catch, right? I know I'm generalizing, and so this gets people in hot water, but the women, you know, there's multiple people want Ileana, she gets to choose. Uh, Brandon, all he can do is, is shoot his shot, play his game, keep his cool, be the lone wolf at the bar, and then he comes back, wins it, and they treat it like it's Super Bowl Sunday. Look at the high five in, they got the parade going along. All right, that's if yeah. I know this is in Canada, but if this was in the United States of America, boy, would you get a nice um, uh, orchestra uh, salute there? All right, so Brendan shows up. The other guys go wild. Ileana breaks the news to Adam. Uh, we're calling him Adam from the block, right? J Lo legs with uh, a Rod's face. So um, it rocked him to the core. He calls it a slap in the face. Now Camille tells Adam that he should have known better, and then Adam is annoyed. And I was like, you didn't need to do that, bro. Camille's like, well, you should have known better. She's taken. She's taken by my bro. You know, like Camille's like sort of like the moral beacon here. And then Caitlin's annoyed at Camille because she's like, don't speak for us ladies. Like I can leave you in a second. So then Adam swoops in on Caitlin. Can you believe this? Adam brings Caitlin. These look, first of all, these flowers look like the fake flowers that a magician keeps up his sleeve when he's like, ha ha. Um, so Adam swoops in, new guy swoops in. And then this is the problem with the new guy, right? The new guy always looks better because like, you know, Camille's already played his tricks. He's already told his favorite jokes. This is like one time a DJ tried to hit on my fiance, right? Back, back a couple years ago. And of course she was oblivious to being hit on. And I was like, no, he's hitting on you. And then she just, she, she was oblivious because she's sweet like that and doesn't realize it. But I was like, I can't compete with the DJ. I can't compete with the new guy. I've already told all my jokes. I got nothing. You ever try to tell your lady a joke and she's like, I heard that one before. Ever tell the story about back in, yeah, you told me everything. Sometimes I just make up stories now. You ever tell the story about how I attacked a T-Rex? Yeah, what? Um, so we've got a love triangle with Camille, Caitlin, and Adam. Okay? So Adam's going for Caitlin, right? He's got the buttons undone, pulling a Brennan, and then Camille's like just drinking, uh, I'm assuming, uh, what would that be? A um, What's that drink? Uh, that comes in the, it's not a maker's mark. What's it called? A uh, R- Russian, uh, oh, geez, I'm drawing a blank. You guys know what I'm talking about. You know what that drink is. Why does it come in copper? Nobody knows. That everyone tries to steal them from the bar. Um, so then the question becomes, by the way, uh, it's a love triangle. Chris, uh, so Chris is here. You can't see him. Ponytail Chris. He's Camille's sidekick. He's talking trash about uh, about Adam. It's a, it's a lot of fun what's going on over there. So, uh, Camille is essentially Gaston from Beauty and the Beast. And then Chris is LeFou. All right. Does that make sense? Because he's the hype man. You know what I mean? And it's probably a weird love story happening there, which is fine by all means. You know, the sequel to Beauty and the Beast should be uh, finding out that uh, Gaston is actually a bottom. All right, folks. You never know what you're going to say. So Adam tries to kiss Caitlin, right? This goes down. Adam tries to kiss Caitlin and in front of Camille. And Caitlin might be the best goalie of all time because she glove saves it. She just glove saves it. Nay, you don't. Pushes it away. I thought that was a great moment there. You like how I incorporated some hockey lingo? Is a glove save even a hockey lingo? I don't know. So anyway, she glove saves it. And then everyone's like, oh, she shut him down. But it's like, she's also like, let's just go to a private place. So then they go to a private place. They start hooking up. Um, they move into that nook. They sling saliva. Caitlin says Camille needs to put in more work. Caitlin's like a boss, and Camille and Adam are going for the same promotion. She's like, whoever's going to work harder, whoever's going to go down on me faster, whoever's going to make me uh, make my productivity come. Uh, so the pre again weird. Uh, so the pre rose uh, raw and uncut, just like Adam and Camille. So the pre rose ceremony is filled with people trying to secure the rose, of course. Um, oh, that's, that doesn't come yet. So people are trying to secure the rose. Uh, Ileana's back to with Brendan. Lisa chooses Josh over Chris or David. Caitlin has the final rose. Adam's hoping to win her over. Camille obviously has been steady with her all along. Camille chooses, uh, Caitlin chooses Camille, which I was surprised. I thought Caitlin might've gone for, um, for the new guy. You know, I don't know, but it turns out she's pretty into Camille. Bianca arrives, mentions she's, this is 37 year old Bianca, which, you know, 37, Hey, 30, this isn't your grandma's 37. When you were a teenager, you thought of 37 as being some, you know, lady who looked like she was, uh, you know, a sister wife, you know, one of Warren Jet's sister wives. You know, I don't know. But 37 sexy. 37 sexy now. 47 sexy. 57. They're all 107. Everyone's sexy. The other women mention her age, a shock, like they're surprised she's still walking. How did she get here? She rode in a boat? Oh my gosh. Like, what's wrong with her? How is, how is her body not falling apart? You know, and that's what I love about ageism is like, no, I'm 36, right? So 
ageism's funny because we all remember when we were 22 being like, oh, geez, 30 year olds. And then you turn 30 and you're like, hey, it ain't too bad. And then you turn 40, you're like, all right, I'm still alive. You know what I mean? You try your best. Um, so she arrives. Mike asks Caitlin. Okay, so she arrives and Mike asks Caitlin on a date and she fumbles her response. Oh, Nicole arrives too. Sorry, I didn't cover that. That's Nicole. She arrives too. 25, the youngest and the oldest. Wow, the 20, but the fact that a 25 year old is the youngest goes to show how much more mature the Bachelor in Paradise Canada season is. 25 would be the oldest in, in uh, our Bachelor. We like him young. Uh, so Mike asks Caitlin on a date. She fumbles her response. She's like, Mike, you're uh, throwing me for a loop. She's like, I don't even know what to say, which is never a good sign. She's confused as to where all this is coming from. Hey, it's Bachelor in Paradise. Guy's going to shoot a shot. Mike's with Stacy, and Caitlin's like, huh? But but Caitlin doesn't say no. Stacy feels blindsided, and all the women come to Stacy's defense. They all get triggered because they've all been there before, which is hilarious, right? Um, so uh, back there, all the women... They're mad, you know, and I get it. Like men, if if a if a if a guy dumps a if a girl dumps a guy for like a more muscular guy, we'll be like, man, she's just you know whatever. Or if like a girl dumps a guy for a richer guy, we'll be triggered by that. And uh, and the same thing happens if you know the girls are obviously coming to the defense of Stacy because they're like, what a pig, he's awful, and he's like, I'm just trying to shoot my shot. But you know, obviously, maybe if he's going to hit on someone else, he should have told Stacy. I don't know. Mike has to talk with Stacy now that he got rejected. And um, Camille now wants to see what's up with Nicole. So we have Nic we have Camille and Nicole here. Boy, isn't that a nice? This is a Canadian, uh, nice Canadian colors here, right? We got this nice Santa Claus chic thing happening here with Nicole. So Camille's like, ah, we'll see what's happening with Nicole. Talks to Nicole. Uh, she's his new shiny red ball, just like Caitlyn had Adam. An eye for an eye makes the whole world blind. But in this world, I say, go for it and catch a grind. Uh, just made up that poem, poet, and I definitely knew it. Um, so, so they're just talking now. Caitlin made out with Adam. She rejected him, but then she made out with him. Meanwhile, Camille's just talking with Nicole, and what happens? We have a drive-by, folks. Kind of hard to see. The girls do a drive-by, a walk-by, and she goes, "See, my intuition was right." Then Caitlin has a meltdown in her cabin. It's like, what? Camille and Nicole? They just chatted and they just hugged. And I'm not saying all women are in you know, are one way and all men are the other way, but I think like, sh and leave a comment. Let me know. Shouldn't Caitlin have let Camille talk with Nicole because Camille? Uh, sort of didn't raise a stink. He didn't go in his cabin crying. He didn't do all these things. Sure, he was jealous when Caitlin was talking to Adam, but he kind of took it on a chin because it's Bachelor in Paradise. And then when Caitlin did it, she's like, see, this keeps happening. It's like, you just accepted a kiss with Adam. So you can't be mad when it comes back to bite you. I don't know, folks. Let me know what you think. Wish uh, Brendan a happy birthday in the comments. And uh, maybe we'll see him on a podcast very soon. Uh, we'll talk to you guys later. And again, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. 50 subscribers by next episode or donezo. We're going to turn the station wagon right around. We'll talk to you later. Bye, guys.